But Thomas Sankara lived when you are alive. He was here in Burkina Faso in 1983. He was a military man just as you are. He participated in a process that eliminated a neo-colonial regime. The country was then known as Upper Volta. He said, why are we called Upper Volta? He changed the name into Burkina Faso, the land of the upright man. And he said that the people of Burkina Faso would be called the Bukinabe, the upright man. He came at a time when Burkina Faso could not feed ourselves. And he said that we can feed ourselves. He said that we can produce enough food to export. He said that we shall no longer be controlled from Paris, France. They took him out in 1987. And as I speak now, a trial is going on in Ouagadougou. People who are led to have taken him out courtesy of the colonial power of France. The spirit of Thomas Sankara is the spirit that we need now so that Africa can recognize ourselves. So that Africans can realize that we have the ability to do things for ourselves. In a world where economic power often lies in the hands of foreign entities, what happens when a nation decides to reclaim its wealth? Burkina Faso, a country abundant in gold, provides a riveting case study of this struggle for economic sovereignty. As Captain Ibrahim Traore ascends to leadership, he faces the daunting task of rescuing Burkina Faso's gold from the clutches of foreign companies and terrorist groups. This narrative is not merely about economics, but the profound fight for a nation's soul and future. Wait! Do you know that Burkina Faso, one of Africa's leading gold producers, finds itself in a precarious situation? The country's gold industry, its major export driver, has been dominated by foreign corporations, reaping substantial profits while leaving the local populace with crumbs. Moreover, insurgents have exploited the artisanal gold mining sector, using it as a financial lifeline for their terror activities. When Captain Traore took office, he discovered that Burkina Faso had almost no control over its own gold mining industry, prompting him to take drastic measures. Here is the kick. Traore banned gold exports and initiated the construction of the country's first gold refinery and mining waste processing facility. His goal was clear to sever the financial lifelines of terrorist groups and ensure that the wealth generated by Burkina Faso's gold benefited its citizens. But this approach, while audacious, raises numerous questions. Can such a ban truly bring the nation's gold back under its control? Or does it merely skim the surface of deeper issues? Will it effectively cut off funding to terrorists or are there more sinister underlying battles to confront? Yet, despite the export ban, gold smuggling remains a persistent problem. Rebels, undeterred by the new regulations, have found clandestine routes to smuggle gold out of the country. This smuggling undermines the government's efforts and highlights a darker, more complex struggle against these insurgent groups. Here is the shocking part. Can military strength alone reclaim Burkina Faso's gold from these dangerous factions? Traore, undeterred by the smuggling, launched military operations to reclaim gold mines from terrorist control. One significant focus was the Jibo Greenstone Belt, an area rich in ancient rock formations and gold reserves, but also rife with terrorist activity. Imagine the scene, terrorists exploiting the land, violent clashes, and civilians living in constant fear. Under Traore's command, the Burkinabe military executed strategic operations with precision, employing drones and advanced tactics. These efforts yielded victories, marking a turning point in the fight against terrorism. But with each triumph, new challenges emerge. Is this the dawn of true security, or merely a fleeting respite in a protracted conflict? Do you know what's happening elsewhere? Consider the trend of African nations repatriating their gold reserves from the USA. 
countries like Nigeria, Ghana, and Cameroon are moving their assets back home. This move is not just about economics. It symbolizes sovereignty and self-determination. The implications for the global financial system, especially the dominance of the U.S. dollar, are profound. Why are these countries making such bold decisions, and what does it mean for international finance? For instance, Nigeria, with $32, $15 billion in foreign reserves, decided to bring this wealth home to ensure economic security and independence. Here's the kicker. This move is a powerful statement of intent. Nigeria aims to control its economic destiny. Similarly, Ghana, with $9.9 .9 billion in reserves, seeks to boost its domestic economy. Cameroon, holding $3.5 billion in reserves, is also repatriating its assets. This trend of economic nationalism across Africa could potentially reshape the continent's future. What if more countries join this movement? Could it signal the decline of the U.S. dollar's dominance? Look at this. Historical precedents offer valuable insights. Venezuela, in 2011, repatriated its gold from foreign banks amidst political tensions and economic instability. Despite significant obstacles, Venezuela succeeded, setting a powerful example of economic sovereignty. Even European countries such as Germany and the Netherlands have repatriated gold in response to financial uncertainties, demonstrating that even established economies are cautious about external dependencies. These examples reveal a global pattern of reassessing financial security. But what does this mean for the global financial system? If countries no longer trust the USA as a safe haven for their assets, the erosion of trust could weaken the US dollar and alter global trade dynamics. Should African nations start investing repatriated assets into their economies, the continent could experience unprecedented growth and development. Imagine a future where Africa's wealth fuels its own progress, free from external control. How would the world react to an economically powerful Africa? Africa, historically, Sub-Saharan Africa has been fundamental to the global prosperity of the advanced countries. Okay? And Africa had a role to play. It has a role as a raw material producer. We will not allow Sub-Saharan Africa to escape that. Okay, we do everything to keep Sub-Saharan Africa where it is, also impoverished. It's absolutely vital for the prosperity of everyone else. So let's get clear about that. Here's the bottom line. Burkina Faso's struggle for its gold and the broader trend of African repatriation signal a seismic shift in global economics. These actions challenge long-standing power structures and herald a new era of economic self-reliance for Africa. The stakes are high and the outcomes uncertain. Will these bold moves lead to lasting prosperity and security, or will they provoke new conflicts and challenges? As this story unfolds, one thing is clear. The world is watching, and the future of African wealth hangs in the balance. What lies ahead for Burkina Faso and Africa's economic sovereignty? Will they succeed in reclaiming their destiny, or will new adversities arise? We want to hear your thoughts. Comment below, share your insights, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more deep dives into the most compelling global issues. Join the conversation. Your voice matters. If you are still not following us, you are probably never going to see us again. But if you are, congrats. You are on a journey of discovery as we unlock the mysteries of the past.